Hey, welcome to Dating Advice for Men Who Love Women. I'm Jim Wolf, and today we have a very special guest with us. His name is Joe Bukoff, and he's actually a master of taking amazing profile photos for men's dating profiles. And so we have a really great expert photographer with us today. And that's his entire job is just helping guys have amazing profile photos for their dating profiles, get more matches, get more dates. And his journey is really interesting. So if you don't mind, uh, Joe, can we start off by just kind of uh, having you introduce yourself and kind of telling us how you got into this whole uh, dating profile photography thing, what led you down that path, and then kind of talk about uh, what you're doing in terms of your career right now. Sure, Jim. Sounds good. Uh, appreciate the, uh, the intro. Uh, very flattering. I, um, I um, started out a few years ago, actually, when I was in Latvia and Lithuania. This is before I became a photographer. Uh, I know you're in Armenia right now. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, somewhat close to home, um, you know, a couple hundred thousand miles, whatever. But uh, <laughs> I remember there's a night I was, I, I was traveling, I was doing the digital nomad thing and I wanted very much to have some companionship. I was kind of getting lonely. Um, and I also really like sex. So I wanted a lot of that as well. And I was swiping like crazy on, on the apps on, um, I think just Tinder at the time. Uh, and I was, um, I was talking to girls in person and I was getting some results, but I was getting rejected and rejected and rejected. And I remember one mm -hmm. particular night where I was in the bunk bed of a hostel and in Riga in Latvia, mm -hmm. and I cried myself to sleep after one, after like this, the final straw, like the last straw on the camel's back was like, ah, oh, man, like this is just over overwhelming. And so I, can I say fucking on your channel? Sure. Okay. Cool. Oh, it was over. <laughs> it's, well. it's after the first 30 seconds, I think. So cool. <laughs> and so then I, I, um, I was like, you know what? I'm going to get better photos. I'm going to figure out how to do this online dating thing. And I worked really hard at first with my cell phone because that's what I had at the time. And then um, a couple of years later, a mentor I worked with, shout out to Andy from Kill Your Inner Loser who um, helped me a lot when it comes to this, putting everything together when it comes to girls. And it was pretty awesome. Pretty awesome, dude. He suggested that I get a camera for my own profile. So mm -hmm. I did, I got a camera, my first camera, um, which I still have, I still use. I, I have another camera that I use for most of my photos, but I have a backup camera. And I started getting photos. I went out and got photos with a friend of mine and we would take photos of each other uh, with, the, with my camera. And um, eventually people started to notice because I would post them on social media, on Facebook and Instagram. People were like, oh, well, those are good photos. And I'm like, yeah, I'm starting to get into photography. And um, I just caught the bug and people noticed and people asked me how much I charge. And I'm like, hmm, I can make money with this. <laughs> <laughs> and since then, I've worked with over 100 clients. I've taken over wow. 200,000 photos and um, I've been on like several podcasts and youtube channels and including my my favorite uh uh yours so um, <laughs> that's awesome i, I think i actually yeah. heard you on uh, the ask women podcast i know those yes. those those ladies too they're really cool so that's oh, another great. great one yeah yeah they're I like great talking yeah. to them too for sure oh, no, they're awesome peeps love them love them cool. so much marty and Kristen. that's yeah yeah i have been on their show once as well so i nice. don't know Kristen that well but marty's really cool too so that's a really interesting story and it comes from a very personal place. And how does it kind of impact you when you're helping someone else? Like, do they tell you their story afterwards? Like how, what have people shared with you about their experience after you take their awesome mm. profile photos? Sure. So um, I will often reach out. Uh, some clients reach out to me and then I yeah. will often reach out myself a couple of weeks to a month or two after the photo shoot and be like, Hey, how are the photos doing? What's going on? <laughs> And it's really funny because I, I have, um, so I have one client, first of all, that I did who actually was referred by my, um, I think the first one that, that hit me up after the podcast, Ask Women podcast. I, I do photo shoots around the country and, and I've done about 20 different cities, but this guy, he lived in Austin. So it was even more convenient for him because he's like, oh, I'm just around the corner, might as well. And um, 
he hit me up, we did a photo shoot. And then he, after the photo shoot, he referred his friend like a, cu a couple of days later. He's like, well, this was even before he got his photos. He's like, my experience was amazing. Like this guy, it was really comfortable working with him. I I'm so happy with the photos that we got. Um, you should work with him too. Cause he was in the same boat. And, um, I, and, and he put us in a group chat. So I have like a, a text group chat and I still like keep up with him. And I, I host karaoke, like a private room karaoke just for some friends um, yeah. every single month. And I, I hit them up. I was like, hey, um, you guys want to come to karaoke? And one of them was like, the original, the first guy was like, uh, I'd love to, but you'll be happy to hear this. I have a date tonight. And then the other one was like, yeah, uh, I, I'm sorry, I can't come. I also have a date. And I'm like, this is great. Like, and they're like, yeah, like, I'm sorry, I haven't had much time to hang out. It's just because I just am having dates left and right. Um, so that was really nice. Now, I will say, while everybody gets improvements, or at least everybody that get that responds to me, <laughs> not everyone, not everyone reaches back out. So I can't say for 100% that everyone gets improvements because some, some, if I'm being objective about it, I don't have data from everybody. But of the people that reach out, everyone gets improvements. Some people get life-changing like i have to pause my accounts i have too many dates improvements and some people get uh, more modest improvements so i can't like promise everybody will get like through the roof improvements but it definitely does happen so this is kind of a anecdotal thing but i'm really sure. curious about this because i have to tell you like the online dating side of things is probably my weakest point as a coach that's one of the reasons why i brought you on uh, for an interview today, because I think it's very important. Obviously today, most people are meeting each other online and I'm kind of an in-person person. That's kind of what I prefer. And so that's probably my weakest point, but still as a person who has been coaching guys for like, uh, seven or eight years now, I obviously researched it a lot. Um, but I don't know everything about it. So I'm curious what you think from your perspective and working with all these guys, I've heard that on like Tinder, Bumble, these kind of dating apps, it's basically like the top 5% of looks are getting all the matches from women pretty much, or at least like they have some kind of style or something that these women are finding attractive. And most of the guys, like just a few of the guys are getting all the matches. Do you think that like kind of an average looking guy, do you think he's going to compete with those top guys when they have better photos? Or is it like... They get a few more matches or what's kind of the range of where these improvements occur? Because I've heard it's pretty rough out there on Tinder and Bumble. Mm -hmm. That's a really good question. Um, I mean, it, it, it's a lot of people come to me and are like, am I like, is it me or is it my photos? Or if I do improve yeah. my photos, is it going to help me out or not? Uh, my intention with this interview, just to be clear, is to give you as much value as possible. <clears throat> obviously, awesome. hopefully some people, Mitch, you know, come to my site and book me. Like that's <laughs> obviously in the back of my mind, but um, By the way, I just want to interrupt you. If if you're thinking about it, you should book a session with Joe. I actually have seen a lot of his work. I did a lot of research before this interview, so I highly recommend it for sure. I would do it if I lived in Austin or somewhere reasonably close to you for sure. Not Armenia. <laughs> yeah, not Armenia. And I have a girlfriend, so, you know. Sure, that's also perfect. not looking for that right now. <laughs> I, I appreciate that. So like you, I want to give you information you can either use for yourself um, with either a really good cell phone because I'm actually creating, I'm going a lot of tangents here, um, or right. with, or hire another photographer and take this information to that shoot. So I want to give value that whether or not you work with me, you can use. And obviously, if you want to work with me, I'm available. But um, what was your question again? Oh, like, yes. If, if you're a kind of an average looks guy, like how mm. can you, how easy is it to compete with these top level guys that are getting all the matches sure. if you have amazing photos that show like you're such a cool person? It's showing your genuine personality mm -hmm. really well, but in a cool way like you do with your photos. I'm sure it's improved, but how how much kind of for an sure. average guy? So yeah, so um, I will say one of my philosophies is as as a man, it's important to be self improving as much as possible, and that yeah. means that you know in all areas of life, um, and that includes physique, fashion, and grooming, which are the three like components of looks, right? Of physical attractiveness, there's physique, fashion, and grooming. Um, now, if you're at a position where you're not elite or you're not like top 10%, top 5% in those, I have worked with a lot of guys who are not, and I have gotten them improvements. Um, I think I think being unclear or misrepresenting 
the facts of what works and what doesn't is very harmful to um, to people. So what I will say is um, the the better you get at fashion physique and grooming, the more of a result you'll get from improving your photos. It's like a bottleneck thing. It's like if the bottleneck is your photos, you improve the photos, then your photos will be just as good as you are, right? So, um, but most, I would say almost every guy, their photos are their bottleneck because most guys and me, before I picked up a camera, I, I didn't know how to take photos. And most guys don't. All girls are like amateur models and photographers because they'll go out <laughs> and they'll be like, hey, well, click, click, click. Um, and also that said, I do, for every client who signs up, the moment they give, they put in the deposit, I send them an email with, um, I call it a modeling 101 video. And you'll kind of see me doing some of this subtly here um, in the camera. Uh, where like I'm turning um, um, the, the way the lighting is set up and the way that I'm kind of pushing up my neck a little bit uh, highlights my jawline. And you'll see this in my photos too. And like the way that I'm turning my head, it's subtle and it looks, it looks normal and it is normal. But like if you look for, if you looked at me from the side, like if you were standing right over there and you're looking at me from the side, I might look a little weird, but that's because I know where the camera is. I can control the frame. I can control the lighting. Um, and I'm doing things that make me look more flattering. Um, so mm -hmm. that's something I, I give to clients that will up your attractiveness level. Um, even if you don't do anything with, you know, with your body, just the photos will make you look more attractive and not in a way that's a catfish, like it's actually you. And then I also give, um, my friend is a, um, uh, a men's style consultant. That's what he does. And he, I, I, with him. I've helped develop a, a wardrobe checklist. And so this wardrobe checklist is a, a very easy, essentially like a shopping list of what types of clothes to get for our photo shoot with enough room for like, it's not like a very rigid one. It's like, it's got enough room for, um, for you to put your personality in. And that will, uh, if you're motivated, you can use that checklist that you get to increase your fashion and um, be prepared for a shoot. You know, that's really cool because there's always two aspects of anything you're doing in terms of whether it's dating or trying to sell something in a business. There's always like the actual product, which is you and your fitness and uh, your personality and all that stuff. And then there's the marketing, which is like your online profile, obviously now is the most important thing, but also in person, your fashion, the, your body language, the way you're carrying yourself, your shoes are really important, probably uh, mm -hmm. if you're looking at dating. And so I think that's like, the marketing aspect and the product aspect, and you are making people's marketing so much better. And that's ultimately what drives these matches online. And so I wanted to ask you like a follow-up about that. Are these guys in general, do you think they're getting more matches, only more matches, or are they also getting more dates? Because I think like you can get a lot of matches and then kind of goes nowhere. Like, is it still easier to get a woman out on a date? when you have these better photos or are they just getting more matches and kind of more messages or, or is it still working right now to meet people on these sites? That's a really good question. Um, cause more matches don't necessarily equal more dates if they're low quality matches. Or like, for instance, uh, one thing that I talk about in a profile is, um, it's good to be somewhat polarizing because that means that some people will swipe left but the people who swipe right will be more excited about you. Right. And oh, so yeah. there is something to be said, if you're less polarizing, you'll get more matches, but you might go on less dates. And if you're just like you nice guy without any edge, right. Then you might get more matches, but you're, they're not going to go anywhere. Um, so I guess your question is like, my clients get more matches, but does that equal more dates? Um, I've gotten feedback from clients where like the thing, the thing that they're excited about, they're getting more matches, but the thing that they're more excited about is girls are more excited to meet them and they're more responsive. Um, cause I, awesome. I know how, how frustrating it can be, <laughs> to be to be getting matches, but then like, no, like the girls don't respond. And the thing is, no matter how attractive you are, that's going to happen. But yeah. And it's, you know, you just have to get used to rejection. Um, as the guy where, where, you know, if you want, even if you're not even like forget about dating, if you want something, it's your job to try to make it happen. If you don't try to make it happen, you just like, okay, it'll come to me. It's like, well, maybe it will, maybe it won't. You're leaving it in someone else's hands. If you decided you want something, it's your job to go get it. Even like forgetting about the whole, you know, default role of being the initiator. Um, if you want something and that thing is a love life, it's your job to initiate or to go try to make it happen. 
And so you have to get used to rejection because of that. But I have had a lot of feedback from clients saying that they're really excited that girls are responding more, more eager to go out and more excited, et cetera. Um, just in proportionally because of their photos. Um, so that's one thing about photo. Like if you like say you don't like my nose or whatever, you don't want to work with me. Um, or like my eyebrows are too dark for you or something. I don't know. I'm intense or whatever. You don't like <laughs> the fact that I have a chain and they think I look, I look like a fuck boy. Um, and you want to work with somebody else. Uh, then the most bang for the buck on dating profiles are your photos. Absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's, I was, I was seeing, seeing if I could go further with that. Um, but yeah, the mo most bang for your buck when it comes to improving your online dating is your photos. Bio, I would say comes second to that. Well, and I think what's really interesting about your work, because I have seen a few examples is that you accentuate the guy's personality and things that he likes to do in the photos, which is a lot better than just saying, you know, it's better to have like a, a football in your arm and an action shot than it mm -hmm. is to say, I like football. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's a lot yeah. more, we like to look at photos. That's why Instagram is so popular, obviously. I appreciate and that. Then, uh, yeah, sorry. go ahead. No, please. No, 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 no. It's okay. I was just going to say, um, I'll, I want to share my screen. So, you, cause, uh, uh, that way you can, you guys can see, um, the photos we're talking about instead of just like talking. Yeah. About they're them. real good. They're really good. I'm not just saying that. I appreciate that. I appreciate that. Uh, let and me, I, 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 what yeah. I really like about your website too, if you guys check out his website, he has the before photos that the guys mm. were taking, and then he has the ones that he took for them. And you can, I mean, it's so obvious to see the difference. It's really cool. Oh, there Thanks. we go. Yeah. So this is my Instagram account. I'm actually, so, um, I'm not going to show the handle because it's my old, uh, I I'm starting a new account. I did a, a slight rebrand from passion unchained to dating unchained. Um, and this is the old account that I'm keeping around because I did some collaborations with creators and they, you know, plug my handle and I want to keep that, but it has more because it's older. It has more, uh, examples. There's actually a reel. Um, so this, and there, this there you are showing your photography skills right there. Oh that's yeah. Perfect, yeah, yeah, perfect yeah. example. <laughs> that's me. That's, that's done by my friend. Um, because obviously I didn't take a photo of myself. Yeah. Um, these are reels. These are actually kind of fun to see. Uh, this is my friend. He's, he's a badass. He did really, really well on his physique. Um, did a lot of work on that. And he actually didn't have a six pack before, but now he does. Uh, that was a fun one to do. And uh, that was, that one's one of the well, minority where he's not really doing anything specific, but those are great for the first photo or two photos in your profile. It just needs to show your body clearly and your face clearly. And then like, for instance, this is one that I did where it's like, who says that video gaming can't be sexy. It's like, yeah, I love that photo. photo. It's great. You know who this guy is already a little bit, a little bit. Yeah. That's something he likes to do. And also like there's a little clutter in the background, but that makes him more relatable. And it's a great photo. Like it wouldn't work. Cause he's a bodybuilder. You can see he's got muscles out the wazoo. If he didn't have a good physique or like good fashion or had a good facial expression, this wouldn't work. The only reason it works is because the lighting is great and he looks good. Um, this is one where it's like this cool fucking dude, just like in an interesting background, having a beer. It's like, that's very relatable. Like you kind of get an idea of who this is. This one, he's like, he's like, he's like a shark. He's like, ah, you want to play me? You sure? <laughs> he's got like a chess board in an interesting background. And so it's always like, I always like to do people doing something. This guy likes to do D and D and that was important for him to show. So I'm like, that's going to be polarizing and the right person is going to really love that. Exactly. And that's the point. It's like, you don't want to attract everyone. You want to attract people that align with your goals. This one is really good. That's another one of me. This one I actually did take myself. I popped my, um, my everything on a tripod and then, uh, I have, you don't, you can't see it right there, but I have a remote in my hand. I cut it off there because on purpose. Um, I really love the yeah. cigar photos. Those are cool. I just got a new one with a new client that I actually just edited. I'm about to um, be posting that soon. So this one is so one I, I really love. I got a follow-up about this that I think sure. you can easily answer. Let's say that these guys have these awesome photos right here and I've seen their before photos and they look mm -hmm. a little different. Like, let's say you have amazing photos in your profile and then you show up for the date. Is there any risk that like she could be disappointed of like the reality of you when you come and you had all these awesome photos and now you're kind of in the bad lighting of the restaurant, like in Seinfeld? Um, that's a good question. I've, I've never had that situation. And one of the reasons is because um, authenticity is very important to me in photography. So if you work, 
like I said, if you don't like my nose or I'm like too intimidating for you or I look too much of a fuck boy or something, I've, I've helped guys get like long-term relationships. So like I'm, I'll help you with your goals, not with my goals. Um, but if you don't like me for whatever reason, you want to go with someone else, make sure your photographer values authenticity. So like, for instance, some people will be like, Hey, can you like morph my muscles a little bit to make me look more muscular? And I'm like, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm sorry. Like uh, a, a photographer that I respect here in Austin, um, his name is Kevin Deal. He's, he's, uh, he's been doing photography, for, I think for 20 years or so. He had a really great litmus test about how to edit and what to edit in photos. He said, mm -hmm. if it's not going to be there in 30 days, take it out. But if it's mm -hmm. going to be there forever, or if it's like a permanent feature, don't touch it. And so that whole thing mm -hmm. is about authenticity. And so like, he also said, like, you want to make it look like your client on your best day, on their best day. You don't want to make it look like something they're not. Um, and I really like to, there's mm -hmm. a great analogy I like to use. Um, so Inception, right? Awesome fucking movie, right? That's a, that's a movie that I, I think most people who saw it liked. If you didn't, then you're probably not human or you at least have a really <laughs> bad taste. Um, but Inception, I love the movie. When I saw the trailer, I got really excited about it because I'm like, oh, it's like action, action. It got me excited. Um, and I wasn't mad when I saw the movie that there were some moments where, like, for instance, where Cobb, like Leonardo DiCaprio, goes in and sees uh, Michael Caine in the uh in the lecture hall in paris and like they have like boring talks like uh like it's just you're just talking about things like that didn't bother me i didn't come out of the movie being like oh they lied to me not ev it wasn't like from from front from beginning mm -hmm. to end uh, all action it's like of course i'm going to expect that that's the highlight reel like i'm not mad that i only saw the highlight reel and now i see the movie and there's not just highlights like i kind of understand right but if there was a scene in the in the trailer that I, was so fucking cool, but wasn't in the movie, mm -hmm. then I would be mad. And that's a really great analogy for your dating profile. It's like you kind of understand that it's going to be the highlight reel. Like that's it. That's the point of a profile. Like girls and you seeing a girl's profile, you don't see like an amazing profile and be like, oh my god, this is her all the time. It's like you kind of understand that she's putting the best her best foot forward, and there's some going to be some bad days, but if she put something like if you put on your profile, like you like playing guitar and she goes to your house and she's like, where is your guitar? And you'd be like, oh, yeah, <laughs> I just borrowed that from a friend. I don't really play guitar. It's like, well, that's a bit weird. Right. So that's what I, what I, uh, I think that answers your question, like over Absolutely. answers your question. <laughs> no, that's great. I, I, it's really interesting to look at your dating profile as kind of like the trailer to hanging out with you. That's mm. really interesting. I like that a lot. And I also think it's cool, like you're putting your best foot forward, but it's still your foot. I, I really, mm -hmm. I really think that's a good approach. That's really cool. So then you kind of said that you help guys with their goals. So I want to mm -hmm. actually get into like, is there a difference between guys who want to just go for hookups and do casual mm -hmm. dating and guys who want a long-term relationship? Is there a difference in the kind of photos that you use for those goals and for those different sites? Because they have like, you know, match.com, Tinder, Bumble, eHarmony, they're all kind of different. What would you say about that? Yes. Okay. <laughs> Next question. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I'll explain. <laughs> no, I love it. I love it. That's awesome. Uh, there is a difference. Um, and it's more going to be a spectrum. So you'll have the same types of photos, whether you want something more casual, whether you want to be a boy or you want to like find the mother of your kids, you know, find the mm -hmm. woman you're going to marry. Right. Um, that I, I work with, I'm, I'm actually about to work with my oldest client next week. Um, up until this point, my oldest client was in their late fifties. This guy is 71. I'm really excited because it's going to be a awesome. new thing for me. Um, I've worked with people who are early twenties, um, up through late fifties. And so now it's like 71. It's like, yes, I can finally like, like the, my, my, my bar has gone higher. Obviously he's not looking for casuals. I mean, maybe he's looking for casual sex. Um, we're having surprised. a planning call. <laughs> yeah, we're having a planning call soon. So I will I will get clear on his his goals. But for somebody who is looking for casual sex, you're going to want to up the the edginess photos. You're gonna want to have more like I actually don't have let me hold on. No, nah, I don't want to go over there and get it. Um, but I have a cool you saw the bracelet actually in my other 
photo, other video, or other photo, photo where I was walking in Times Square, that like spiky yeah. bracelet, right? And then I have, yeah. I like to wear chains. I like to have, um, uh, you can't see, but I have um, studs and I also have tattoos, right? So I up the edginess factor because even when I am looking for a long-term relationship, which is one, one thing I'm going to be um, slowly moving towards in my life because I do want to find a main girl and companionship. Um, I love sex and I like to have it early and often in my relationships. And so I like to up the edginess factor to increase that like intrigue and attraction. And then I'll like add in the comfort as I get to know a girl. Now that's because my goals are, um, for me, sex is extremely important. I love it. Now, not everyone ha puts that much important on sex. And so what you'll want to do in your profile is have more smiles, have more laughs and have like, have more like comfort photos. Right. And so the ratio of edginess to comfort and attraction to comfort will change. It's not going to be mm -hmm. like only this type of photo if you're looking for casual stuff and only this type of photo if you're looking to find the mother of your children or like some girl to marry or even it's like you're looking for a girlfriend and companionship first and foremost. It's just going to be a different ratio. So you're going to have like more like more like smiley photos, maybe photos of you cooking um, if you're looking <laughs> for a longer term thing. And then more like bar photos and like exciting, like smoldering photos, like where you're kind of looking like this um, different expressions when you're looking for something more casual. That's awesome. And then another kind of tangential related topic is like, I know, like I've never done this really, but a lot of people now, obviously it's like not even a big deal. Like they meet each other on social media, not even mm -hmm. dating sites. And then they try to make it into dating from that, you know, like there's a lot of guys who are actually really successful meeting women on Instagram, Facebook, mm -hmm that's an old school one, TikTok, you know, all these, whatever the, whatever the kids are using these days, they're just meeting on regular. Age. Yeah, I know. I'm actually, I'm getting older, man. It's crazy. <laughs> but uh, is there something that you should do for those kind of social media profiles that can get you more matches that way when you're trying to meet women on just regular social media? hundred mm -hmm. um, percent. So there, there is like a sales funnel, if you like that some people <laughs> suggest, which is, go from tinder to messaging on instagram if you have a good instagram and that mm. the reason is it'll get your girl more comfortable with you she can see what you're like she can and if you have a good instagram it's like cool this guy is a good instagram um i feel more comfortable i feel more excited about him i feel more comfortable with him i feel like you know it's it, 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 it's it's great if you have a good instagram for you to met to bring it to instagram plus girls feel a little more comfortable because one of the reasons that I found a girl doesn't want to go to texting and she, she's a little, she might've had a bad experience with like a stalker in the past and Instagram has safeguards against that. Um, so mm -hmm. it'll, it does, I don't, I don't actually do this. So, but I have heard and see the benefit of this in the past. And my Instagram is, I mean, I'm a photographer and a model. So like I kind of, um, I mean, my Instagram is pretty good. Yours is working for you. Things. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, it's not because I don't, I should be bringing girls to it, but I don't. So that's kind of my, my fault, but my Instagram is good. I, you know, I have had some girls like after we see each other, they'll see my Instagram and they'll follow me. Um, so I'm not even following this advice, but it's good advice. And that is that the photos that we take or that you take with whoever um, you put them on your Instagram and then have, and like post one every like week or so, like don't like post them all at once, but like post them over time and then you'll have these stellar photos on your Instagram and then say on Tinder or Bumble or Hinge or, or Match.com or something. I don't really know exactly how Match.com works. I should really research that. I have had a lot of clients use their photos on Match.com. Um, hmm. So that's that's a blind spot on my part, uh, not knowing how that works. But that's something that I, I'll have to learn. But you get a girl to, instead of like, hey, what's your number? It's like, hey, what's your Insta? I'm going to message you there. Follow her on Insta, message her. And then your she sees your photos, your stellar photos on Instagram, and it will be the the ones that you put on Tinder plus like fifty more or whatever. Because in my photo shoots, I give the client uh, two hundred to three hundred edited photos, and then I have oh, wow. uh, a girl I hired actually. Her name's Sarah. Um, she picks five profiles out of that. She'll pick two profiles mm -hmm. that are good for casual sex or like casual flings. She'll pick two profiles that are good for something more serious if you want to find a girl for long-term companionship. And then she'll pick one of her favorites. Um, and I'm actually soon, what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to 
I'm going to expand it from one girl to a team of girls. Um, I, I have a couple girls interested and I'm going to onboard them, et cetera. I'm going to have like three girls each picking two profiles. That's not happening yet. That's going to be happening in a month or so. But right now, Sarah picks five profiles for each client. So you don't have to like sort through the 300 photos and be like, I don't know which ones to upload. This is overwhelming. So you'll, it'll be like easy to be like, okay, I'm going to try that profile. I'm going to try that one. I'm going to try you know, whatever one you want. Um, but you have access to 200, 300 photos and a good, another good, you know, make sure whichever photographer you work with, if it's not me, we'll give you a good amount of photos. So if you want to post a bunch on Tinder that the girl hasn't seen yet, that's not on your profile, you have that option. And then they could be like, the girl could be like, oh, wow, like this guy seems to have a cool life. That's great. Yeah, yeah. that's, that's really good advice. I think having a good Instagram can definitely help you. Is there anything that can hurt you in terms of your photos on Instagram? Yes. Um, if they're not good. Also, if they don't have many <laughs> likes. And as you saw, like uh, I put my my cursor over the reels that I uploaded recently and they don't have many likes. Like my profile doesn't have many likes. I don't know anything about growing an Instagram. <laughs> I know how to make it. it look good. I don't know anything about growing it. And especially See, now that Instagram is going towards short form video. So there mm -hmm. is a way to hide what I would suggest. And this is what I've heard from somebody else. I haven't I've been following this advice. I, I can't validate it, but it seems like good advice. If you have fewer than 100 likes on the photos, right, click on the three dots and say hide like count. And that way, um, I mean, it looks kind of weird to not see the likes on the photos, but it's better than seeing like, oh, two likes or like 20 likes. 20 likes is like a lot for me, like 20 likes is a lot for a photo because I have no idea how to grow my Instagram. But yeah. the photos look great. So as long as I hide that, it still looks like a good profile. It, that's very interesting. And I think for a lot of women, like Instagram is a kind of place that they go to a lot. Uh, mm -hmm. I don't know, at least like older ones that are not necessarily like the TikTok generation. I think they're on Instagram still. And they're, they're there a lot. So maybe they perceive that as reality sometimes a little bit more than another demographic where it's like, if you don't have social proof on that medium, then it's going to hurt you. And so you should hide it. I think that that totally makes sense for sure. Mm -hmm. So, okay. Let's say that obviously a guy should work with you if they can, because you can take care of everything. I love that mm -hmm. you have a woman kind of choosing the photos for the guys. That's really great because they pick different ones than I would pick for sure. I've seen it yeah. before. I know that that's the case and they're obviously trying to get matches with women. So that's really great. I think that's another good part of your service. I'm a little too but hairy for their tastes usually. <laughs> some of them, some like it. You never know, man. True. Different people are all into all different kinds of stuff. I, I've learned that for sure. Working with all so many people around the world. But let's say a guy's like not even in the US or mm. he's not in your state. He can't really do it right now in terms of working with you. Like what are a few practical tips that any guy can use right now mm. today to make his profiles better? And I just want to start off by saying that I have heard, and I, I, I've seen this in your photos, is another reason to work with you. One tip that I always heard and I always talk about is it's better for someone else to take your photo than to post a selfie. Mm -hmm. I think that's a really easy way for a lot of guys to improve their photos quickly. Yeah. So there's a lot of good tips on how to get your photos done yourself. Um, I actually am this year, I, I'm currently building it and it will be released sometime this year. I'll start pre-sales at some point. And I'll let you, let you know when that happens so you can let people know and everything. Um, I'm creating a course on how to improve your Tinder matches with just your cell phone in a week. Wow, and cool. essentially it's photography 101 for you with your cell phone because my photo shoots are uh, not on, they're definitely a premium product and not everyone is in a financial place where they can you know comfortably um, pay, pay for that. So what I've decided to do is I've decided to be like, well, how do I help you? How do I help you do it yourself? And so I'm building up a course and I can give you some of the stuff from that. First of all, uh, I just got this text from my friend this morning, actually. Um, my client, he's also a friend. Let me share the screen. All right. So my client gave me this. Can you see it? Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah. So we just did our photo shoot on Sunday. Um, I'm getting the feedback, I edited them and uploaded them and I'm getting the feedback from Sarah today. And so I'm about to deliver his photo. He doesn't have his photos yet, but he sent me uh, this. He's like, hey, I just took this in the hotel room, putting together everything you taught me on our photo shoot and in preparation. And I got this photo and I'm like, that is a really good photo. Um, 
that is something he took himself just from the advice and the experience from his photo shoot. Mm -hmm. So, the, and that's the kind of stuff that I'm going to be teaching in this course. And I'll give you some of it right now. That is a selfie. You can kind of tell because of the way it is, but like using the light in a way where it looks cool, like having the sun behind you can look great if you do it right. And as you can see, mm -hmm. the, the rays look really good. He's also, um, doing the model thing like he's doing the, the model he's like a slight squint to the eyes and the way he's like putting his face is is flattering it shows off his jawline and so the stuff that he's doing is from the modeling 101 video and from my personal coaching when we get in person and so like i'm gonna do it myself he's kind of like doing a little bit of a smirk right mm, um yeah. <laughs> and uh i love the smirk yeah. Yeah. He's, he's, he's amazing at the smirk, but also like his eyes are kind of soft here. So it's not intimidating. It's a smirk. It's very flirty, but it's also very inviting. And some of the issue that some people have is they'll do a, a really great smirk, but it'll be like very intimidating because their eyes might be too intense. But this guy yeah. is really good at doing, being flirty, but not intimidating. So, I mean, this is a good example of, of like what can be possible like his photos before, and I have his before photos, um, they're not nearly as good as this. And this is because he had the experience with me and he learned from me and I'm going to be doing a course. And let me, let me uh, stop sharing that and, and, and give you as much value as I can right here, right now. Um, and that is go out with a friend and take photos of each other. That's a really great way to do it. Another thing to do is one great pose. And this is the pose that I'm going to be teaching in the course. Um, is walk right so be mid stride as your your friend is taking photos of you with your camera actually have your friend take a video of you with a camera as high resolution as possible as high frame rate 4k 60 if possible or if you're watching this in five years 8k 120 or whatever phones can do then <laughs> um so have as high resolution and frame rate as possible and then take a video of you and then have you walking towards the camera, looking off to the side with a neutral expression. Um, I hope that I'm giving you a lot of information at one point. I hope that makes sense. And then you'll yes. have that video of you with your friend, your friends taken, and you'll be able, you'll have, um, you'll have every second, you'll have 60 frames to choose from. And what that will do is that will allow you to just choose the perfect moment of that uh, of you walking, it looks perfect with your arms swinging the right way. Your, your, your leg might be like, you know, it, mid stride. It looks really casual and really cool. Um, there's one like other the thing Beatles photo say. where they're all walking across the street. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. It, that, that's a, I would say that's the easiest pose for somebody who doesn't know anything about modeling or photography to get right and make you look really cool. That's, that's why awesome. I choose it. Yeah. I also noticed in that photo that you just showed that he was not opening his mouth, which I think a lot of guys are like, smile, like we're used to smiling yeah. for the camera. Can you say something about that? Yeah. So um, don't smile for the camera, but laugh, <laughs> right? <laughs> I've yeah. learned to smile. As I said, I'm a model and a photographer. So I've, you know, and I've also directed over 500 clients. So I can just be like, smile. I can smile <laughs> in a way that looks like good and like, you know, casual and like sexy, but that's because I've had practice. Fun. I've, I've directed a hundred clients. I am a model. I know how to do all that kind of thing. Um, most people, when they smile um, and me in the past, like I look very posed. Like, yeah. Like yes. uh, even if I try to like get it to my eyes, which is like usually what cheesy. you're supposed to usually. Yeah. Usually the advice is like, make your eyes wrinkle on the side. It's like, I still looks really posed. It's like, looks like, yeah. Ooh, there's a camera. There's a, um, that laughing trick does work. I actually mm -hmm. realized after, I think I heard you say this on the Ask Women podcast. Yes. And then Kristen I, and I were going back and forth about that. I realized that I do it naturally when people are taking photos of me anywhere. Like I already do mm -hmm. that. Like <laughs> I didn't yeah. realize I did it until you said that. It's really crazy. No, it's great. Also another trick for laughing. This is, this is an OP trick that I don't, I've only heard one other place and it was in person. I worked for a photography team and this guy taught me this and it was fucking great. Um, Normally, uh, uh, give me give me a laugh real quick. I want to prove the point here. Yeah, that was a great laugh. Uh, normally, the instinct for people to laugh, and this is something you did as well, is when you laugh, <laughs> you're gonna yeah. throw your head back, right? Throw your head up, yeah, a little bit. Yeah, but you see how that like now my jaw looks a little softer. It doesn't look as good for sure. And for I'm a man. I'm a lean guy, and I also have 
shaved my 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 facial hair to accentuate my jawline on purpose that's mm. a purposeful thing i've done now my jawline looks even better it separates my mm. the edge of my jaw from my neck right um i put my head back and it looks instantly worse because now my jawline is softer it's not as sharp and this is especially true if you're not lean like me and you don't have a beard that's like this then you want to even more heed this advice the advice is laugh <laughs> But either try to keep your head in the same place or try to like put your head like out and forward. Now, obviously don't do this. It's going to look really <laughs> weird. But just like, <laughs> you see how like I put my head slightly forward? Uh, it looks a lot like, better it, than, yeah. <laughs> like that. It's like, well, no, it's like, yeah. So that's a very Not subtle showing, thing yeah. that is powerful in the camera. Cool. Yeah, yeah. And I think you mentioned the eyes too. Are you familiar mm -hmm. with Peter Hurley? Yes, actually, a lot of this information I got from Peter Hurley, the the jawline thing, and uh, not the laughing, but the 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 what you do with your eyes, and yeah, a lot of that is. He from talks Peter about Hurley. the eye stuff. Yeah, for sure, for sure. Yeah. Okay. He's cool. He's, so I, he's a, a copyrighted the term he uses, so I oh, okay. um, I don't know how litigious he is, but I, don't I use know the what term. that word is. I know I know yeah. what it is, but I, I don't use that it. term because okay. I I don't want. I mean, I want his attention because it'd be cool to, you know, have an interview with him, but I also don't want his litigious attention. So I use my own term for it. It's not, it's not a, a, um, a facial expression that he invented. It's one that sure. he's coined a term for and made a name of himself for evangelizing. So, um, I use the facial expression, but, uh, I, I use my own term for, it. I call it determined eyes. That's my, <laughs> my term. I'll probably have to get a better name for that though. That's good. I like that one. No, that's, you know, it's so interesting over time, like one thing I've really learned, especially again, helping guys for this long now, how many details go into every little angle of the process mm -hmm. of dating and relationships and attraction and all this stuff. It's crazy. Like how far down you can drill into each topic. And obviously right now in today's world, these profile photos are extremely important for most people mm -hmm. to meet each other. This is how we're connecting with each other now. So I think you're pr providing a really important and needed service. I think it's really cool. Thank you. And I just have one last kind of bigger question for you, if you don't mind. Sure. So this is kind of just to parse it out a little bit more. I, I'm very curious about this. Like, let's say you have, and I'm not talking about real people in this. I'm just giving an example that we can talk about so we can kind of see if there's a distinction here. I don't okay. know if there is or not. Let's say you have a couple of clients or just a couple of random guys out there and they both follow your advice or they work with you or whatever, and they have really good photos, they both have it. Mm -hmm. Is there something that can still differentiate one of those guys? Like, let's say they're the same level of like fitness and looks and all that stuff. Is there like one or two things that can give one guy an edge over the other one when they're doing online mm -hmm. dating? Sure. So you're saying photos are at the same level. Yeah. Who you are behind the camera is at the same level. Yeah. Um, the answer is yes. And this is something that I do not specialize in. And, you know, I, oh, I may okay. at one point um, partner with somebody because I, I partner with my style guy. You know, he helped me mm -hmm. write my wardrobe guide. And then he also has like a style course that I give my clients a discount on, you know, if they want to be a part of it, which is, you know, it's an extra level above if you want to, you know, just improve your style in general. So I am, if you're curious, if you are a guy that knows how to do this well, you know, happy to talk to you and potentially create like a mutual, mutually beneficial kind of arrangement. I actually know a guy that's really good at this. So maybe I'll hit him up for this. But the point is, one of the great things you can do that can put you above after that is text game. Um, okay. Now, one of the key things that is important for me, like there's a lot of text game advice out there that is bullshit. And especially, <laughs> sure. well, there's also a lot that is... Um, great for extreme short-term benefit but it's unethical and will get you in weird situations like there's a lot of guys out there who will say uh oh like one guy in particular who's in a lot of hot water right now for a lot of other things he'll say and actually he's very litigious so i'm going to be as vague as possible um <laughs> who, who who will say like oh um it's really important to uh just like essentially go with what the girl says and if she says she wants friends just say you want that too because it gives a plausible deniability and you meet up and then you try to have sex then. I'm like, well, that's weird. Like you're literally lying about your intentions. Uh, I don't want to get in the weeds too much here because also it's not my expertise. Right. There's something to be said about plausible deniability. I think that's a great thing to know about and to use. But at the same time, it's like, I don't know. I think a lot of text game advice out there has no ethics and is like, oh, you should make these substantial lies that I think are harmful to like they could get you in weird hot weird situations 
even if you're not thinking about your own integrity, even if you are okay going to sleep at night, having lied to people like in a substantial way, it's still going to cause a lot of drama in your relationships if you do anything more than have a hookup. Um, and so, and even if you do have a, if you do just want hookups, which is hundred percent fine, a lot of my clients, that's what they're looking for. The, um, and a lot of my clients are looking for relationships, but even if you are just looking for hookups, you can get in hot water and like bad situations. If you make a habit of lying substantially to women. And unfortunately, I think a lot of the text game advice out there is like only talks about what works without any talk about like lies or whatever, mm. you know, like ethics. I think it's important to be like what works with the constraint that you're not making any substantial lies. Um, that's just my own personal ethics code. Not everyone feels that way. And if you can go to sleep at night, you know, I don't know. I wouldn't suggest anyone lies, but some people are cool with it. Anyway, <laughs> with that, that was a whole rant. No, but, no, um, I, I agree. I think like it goes back to what you were saying about being authentic in your photos. Mm -hmm. You know, like the more you are, have integrity, if it's something that you want, you say what you want. You know, like it's mm -hmm. you don't have to say it directly. There's a lot of ways to text properly, like you're saying. Yeah. But you should always apply it in the context of who you are, what you're looking for. Yeah. And who the woman is that you're looking for as well and kind of tailor it to that. Yeah. So to answer your question. The what what can give two guys who are on the same level an edge will give one of them an edge is um, texting a girl to make it fun, flirty, exciting. You know, that's something there's a lot of advice on. on, on I mean, I have a guy that I like. If you're cool with me sharing. Um, you sure. Know, I, I'm all about um, giving as much value to guys as possible. I want them to be successful. A hundred percent. Sure. So that's my I've only done, goal. Cool. I've done some collaborations with Alex from Playing With Fire. I've uh, made a mm -hmm. an article for his website. At the point, at the moment of this, it's the most recent article. Um, and uh, he, I looked at it, I actually just, he just put up an ethics video, which I actually pulled some of the stuff I said was from that, a video about his ethics. I fucking love it. Like he's like, he's known for his text game. He helps a lot of guys with that. A lot of my clients have heard of me through the collaborations I've done with him. I have a lot of respect for the guy. And personally, he's cool with doing white lies but not saying anything substantial. And his litmus test is like, if you meet a girl and then you hook up with her, you have sex, right? I mean, even if you're looking for a long-term relationship, it's going to happen at some point. Um, and you tell her after the fact that, oh, by the way, like that thing I said before was not true. Is she going to laugh at it or be angry? And I really like yeah. that. It's like, like, for instance, if you're like, oh, if on your Tinder profile, it says you're six foot and you're really 5'11", and then you tell her, um, well, that's, uh, that's not a good example because she can just kind of see that. Um, if you were like, if say you, like you, you were five minutes late because, um, you just forgot about the date or something and you told her it was because of traffic, like it, after you really got to know her and got really comfortable with her and she knows you like her, et cetera. And you told her, oh yeah, like I was, I actually wasn't, it wasn't traffic. I just, you know, uh, lost track of time. Like she'll probably like, oh, whatever, like, haha, that's funny. But if you told her that you, um, you like, you know, like Chris Evans and you're like his friend and like, you <laughs> I can get you into day. that movie with him. Yeah. Yeah. And then she's you're like, oh, by the way, like, I just use that uh, to get in your pants. And she's going to be like, what the fuck? Like, that's no, like she's going to get mad. So that's a great litmus test that I got from Alex. And, and that makes me trust. That makes me more comfortable to share his, his channel playing with fire. Um, because he, you know, I, I think that he's, he has good advice and uh, especially the fact that he has this ethics code. I think it's, it's great. Cause that's the main criticism I have of a lot of the gurus out there is they are very comfortable have uh, giving substantial lies to women and getting themselves in hot water. I don't think you ever need to do that. And in fact, I think that you can always say things in a way that frames you in a good light, just like you do with photos. Mm -hmm. You want to frame your real self in the best light. I think you can always do that. I think you yeah. should work on being creative with that because there's always things you can say. You know, if you work at a certain company, you don't want to say it right away. You can say that you work in that general field or whatever. You don't have mm -hmm. to say specific details and lie about it. You can always frame things in a way that works for you, I think, mm -hmm. without for lying sure. or being unethical. So just like yeah. you do with your photos, you know, like I could take a selfie and that's real, or you could take a photo of me. It's still real, but it looks way better. <laughs> yeah. Like yeah, my lighting right now is real bad. Like I'm <laughs> making you look great, dude, because I actually, it's a long story, but my lighting is not a uh, ideal today. So that's great. Mm. You can help me with that too. I just have, uh, I mean, I, 
Let me show you. I just have this thing. This is all I have. Uh, yeah, I, I, I have a good setup. It's just uh, some circumstances made that go away for a few oh, days. So I'm sorry. I, I always, I just have this thing. I use it on the too. Very, very simple. No. Right. Lighting is important. Don't, don't forget that, everybody. So, all right. So I just want to wrap this up. Thank you so much for coming on. I actually yeah, think sure. like this is, I want to tell guys like, <laughs> even if you're very good looking and you have good photos, like, try not to take online dating personally. It's basically a numbers mm -hmm. game. Even if you're authentic, you're polarizing, you're good looking. Uh, don't get me wrong. There's like 1% of guys who are not having any problems at all with it. But most people, even in the top 10%, 20, 25, 50% of looks, they're still, it's a hard thing to do. Don't take it personally. The woman doesn't even know you at all yet. Who's swiping left or right on you. She's probably not even paying full attention to it. She's probably like having a coffee and like half swiping or whatever. So try not to take it personally because it can be really rough to just get like no matches over and over again. And you just have to keep going until you filter in some quality matches that you actually are interested in. So, so don't give up and don't get discouraged because it's really hard for everyone. So don't think that there's like, there's, there's just a few guys who always kill it on there every time. And that's not most people. And most people are still meeting each other online. So that's, that's kind of the last thing I wanted to say. Do you have anything to add to that? Yeah, hundred percent. All of that is very, very true. Um, you're very right about that. And I think that's good advice for your viewers. I, I also have some experience to add to that. When you look at a girl's profile, this is something I actually got from Andy uh, from Clear and Loser and then a couple other people. They like, I haven't done this with a girl, but like they'll go on a date with a girl and they'll be like, hey, like I'm just going to pay for Tinder gold for you so I can see how many likes you have. Because what will happen on Tinder is you can see if you pay for the premium, um, you'll be able, and you just, I think it's only 10, oh, it might be Tinder. You might just have to do Tinder because there's three levels. There's Tinder gold plat, uh, plus and platinum. Um, mm. but like they'll pay for the girl to get premium Tinder and then they'll see how many likes that she has. And without fail, the likes are in the thousands. Yeah. The thousands. Yeah. And I've created yeah. girls profiles before just to see what it's like. And um, I particularly found a, 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 a photo of a girl that I wouldn't be attracted to. And I think most guys wouldn't be, you know, she was overweight, whatever. Um, and I put it on a Tinder profile. And it was just that photo. And it was like a really simple bio or nothing in the bio. And um, more than half of my right swipes on guys in the area were matches. Yeah. And it was like not even an attractive girl. And so like the girl, if, if a girl's not responding to you, it could be personal. But most likely in the past hour, 10 other guys had matched and messages with her message with her. And you're like, she might like you the most, but your profile, your, your message is like, she has to scroll down to get your message. And so yeah. it's like just that experience. And from what I've heard of like girls having like without fail, thousands of likes um, very quickly, even after they only had the app for like a few days or a week uh, it's, it's not personal if a girl doesn't respond to you. I, I can confirm that as well. Like back when I was single a long time ago now, yeah. I, you know, every time I would go out with a, I'm also curious about studying this. So I would ask them, they would frequently mm -hmm. show me how many text messages, DMs on social media, on, if they're on a dating app there, <laughs> it's incredible how many, it's almost a full-time job for some of these women. If they wanted yeah. to reply to every message, they're not going to be able to get to it. Even yeah. if they like, let's say there's like, 10 guys they're attracted to today, they might not even message all of them back. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and um, I've had, you know, in my life, I've had times where I've had abundance with girls and like a lot of my clients have abundance with girls and they get it. Like some of my clients, they have to pause their accounts. And that's one thing that I get from girls a lot is they will delete. Let's be overwhelming. I have a lot, like one particular girl I'm seeing right now. She's like a, a really close friends with benefits. We're incompatible in certain ways. So it's not going to, progress further, but it's, uh, I mean, we like each other a lot and we're probably going to stay friends forever. But, um, she has shown me, she, she has shown me her apps and she's just like, she just gets overwhelmed. And this is very common for girls. It's just overwhelming for them. They don't like leaving guys unanswered. Um, yeah. it, they want to be nice. That's the thing about girls. It's like, it's not that she wants to lie to you or like maybe some girls do some girls are manipulative, but like girls sure. aren't trying to be mean. They just, don't want you to feel bad. And I guess they don't realize that like being vague and stuff and, you know, 
hurts you more than them just them just saying they don't like you. But their intentions are, I want to be nice. I don't want to hurt this guy's feelings. Like even like as a guy, yeah. like once you get to a point where you have to reject women, like it's hard. Like I've had to do it several times and it's, it's, I don't want to hurt their feelings. I, I don't yeah. want to. And girls have to do that all the time. And so um, it's not personal. It sucks. It hurts. And I empathize with that. And I, and I feel like that's, it's, it's important to, you know, know that it sucks and, and be, you know, that's okay. It's like have compassion for yourself and that you're feeling sad. But it's not personal um, if girls don't respond. It happens Absolutely. to everybody. Hundred percent. So I just want to finish off with ju- just sure. saying, like, just don't get discouraged if you're going to do online dating. And then if you get an opportunity, work with Joe to get these amazing photos because you will get more matches and you will get more dates. I'm confident of that, and it's going to show your real personality. And so for me, like, I pretty much eighty percent focus on long term relationships when I, when I'm talking to guys, but I teach the whole spectrum of dating and attraction. But if you're looking for a long-term relationship, you need this stuff too, because you need to show part of your personality in your photos and not just have like the one selfie in the bathroom mirror or whatever, you know, like show her who you are a little bit, give her a little flavor, a little trailer of you that the right woman for you is going to notice and like that and then match with you. And then you're going to go on your first date and you're going to take it from there. And also keep going out and meeting people in person. If you can, you know, like, try to show leadership in some way. That's a way that a kind of more average guy can be more attractive. Start a mm, group that goes and true. does fun things together or a philanthropy or organization or something. Be the leader of something big or small, even if it's just like, hey, six other people I know, let's go to the bar. When women see you kind of leading a group like that, they're going to automatically be more attracted to you than if you're not doing that and you're the same guy. So keep all those things going. And then if you get a chance, definitely work with Joe. So if somebody wants to do that, where can they find you and work with you? Sure. So um, I don't know if this is showing or not, because uh, I don't record a Zoom too often, but um, on my, there's a website that may or may not have appeared on my photo. It's, uh, it's on www- my screen over here. Nice. Uh, www.datingunchained.com. Um, and I guess, uh, can you put that in the YouTube video description? It is in the link below this video on YouTube for sure. hundred percent. Cool. So yeah, check that out. Um, and, uh, you can, you can hit me up there and then I'll also give you, uh, Jim, the informate, like the link when, uh, well, it'll probably be available. So if at this point the course is out, it'll be available on that link. Um, and if it is not, you'll be, you'll still be able to sign up to my email list on that link where you on the bottom of the page where you will be able to get updates about that. So either sign up to the email list. If you're curious about the course, um, sign up to the email list or buy it from the site if it's open and then photo shoots are always available there. All right. That sounds great. So go to datingunchained.com if you want to work with Joe Bukoff. And thank you so much for coming on the uh, show today, Joe. I appreciate it. It was really great. My pleasure. All right. So guys, as usual, I also have a lot of free content out there for you. And if you just go to our website, it's datingadviceformenwholovewomen.com. That's datingadviceformenwholovewomen.com. We've got tons of articles, obviously, but we also have full courses and programs and eBooks there for you as well. So definitely check out our website if you haven't already. And with that, I'm Jim Wolf, and I will talk to you later.